Hi, welcome again. So in this lesson, we will learn about static analysis by tools and we'll introduce the lesson to you today. So, so far in static techniques, we talked about there are two categories of static techniques we use in software companies. First category is people based static testing. Those are variety of forms of reviews. And the second category of techniques is static analysis by tools. As I told you in the introduction to static testing, I talked about some kind of artifacts that we develop in software, especially the source code and at times the design models. These are very amenable to be analyzed automatically by intelligent programs and those intelligent programs are called static analysis tools. So today we'll talk about them. So before we start learning about static analysis by tools, let us think about this situation. So let me read for you the situation. A defense contractor developed a safety critical software application with approximately 1 million lines of code, 10 lakh lines of code. On a sample section of code, an inspector, reviewer, reviewed the code manually to determine their per hour checking rate of approximately 75 lines of code per hour. So they have done manual examination of the code written and they measured the checking rate, the speed at which they were able to review the code is approximately 75 lines of code per hour before using a software tool to perform the same check. So they depended manual labor on manual labor to do the code reviews. Approximately how many reviewer hours do you think it would take to manually inspect all of the code of this application? There are 10 lakh lines of code, a million lines of code is there. Your average checking rate is around 75 lines of code per hour. So how many hours do you think it will take? So approximately how many reviewer hours do you think it would take to manually inspect all of the code in this application. So you have four options there. 137,000 hours, 13,700 hours, 1,370 hours or 137 hours. It is anyway simple. You have to 1 million lines of code divided by approximately 75 lines of code. It comes to 13,700 hours hours which is really really large time if you want to manually review the code. So at times the source code reviews for some type of problems if you want to uncover them and fix them manual reviews may not be very productive they take very large time which is impractical at this time. So what should we do? How do we solve this problem? This problem can be solved by deploying automated static analysis tools. And these are automated static analysis tools are, they are software programs, intelligent software programs which can read source code. On your screen, you are seeing a source code. Typically, we are talking about source code. We are not talking about executable code here. So, the static analysis tools come in picture, they replace people and they read every line of the code in the source code and they have enough intelligence on the standards related, control flow related, data flow related uh, issues and they can automatically find those type of defects in a source code. You don't need to spend 13,700 hours to do that. So how static analysis tools work? You have to input to the static analysis tool the source code that you want to be analyzed. And that input will be read by your static analysis tools. And at the end of doing the analysis activity, it provides a report with all the potential anomalies and 
defects that are there in the code. So that is how tools will work. So what kind of problems static analysis tools really find? They can check for violations of standards, especially standards related to coding, the variable naming conventions, the style related issues, all those standard related violations, your tools, automated static analyzers can easily find and make a report. And also they can highlight defects and anomalies related to data flow and also related to control flow. We will talk about what is data flow analysis and also we will talk about what is control flow analysis in the next lessons. But those kind of problems can be found extremely easily by static analyzers. They can find both defects and anomalies. Sometimes anomalies may not cause failures, but they are erroneous. They can sometimes create erroneous results. That is why we have to be watchful about that. Then also, whenever you look at large pieces of code, a lot of metrics related to code can be generated by these static analysis tools. They can measure code, how many lines of code, how many commented lines of code, how many without comments executable lines of code and many other metrics can be generated automatically about the code by these static analyzers. And also we talked about cyclomatic complexity. Cyclomatic complexity is a measure of complexity of a source code. So those numbers, those calculations can be done by your static analyzers very easily. And how do they work? They work just like your compilers. What a compiler does? Compiler, if you are writing a programming program in C, you follow C syntax, you build a logic, then you give it to the compiler. The compiler reads every line of the code and compiler has sufficient intelligence to convert the high level statements to machine understandable code. That is what a compiler does. So, similarly, what static analysis tools do? They also read the source code line by line and they have intelligence about what are the coding standards, what are the good data flow practices, what are the good control flow practices and use that intelligence and they give you all the output, proper output. So that is how we solve the problem of source code reviews for some particular type of defects using tools. So let us learn about them. So a lot of benefits can be achieved by using static analysis tools. Let us quickly look at what are the various benefits. First one, quickly identifying defects and other problems. So unlike if you are putting manpower, humans to do the reviews, they may take a lot of time and they can do a bad job because humans are not good at doing repeated job in a good way. So whereas tools, they can quickly identify. They don't take 137,000 hours. They may take few hours and give the same report. So they can quickly identify defects and other problems. The second benefit is they can provide you reports and visual representations of software. There are 10,000 lines of code and there are various control structures. So I want in a graphical way, I want to see the code, where the code is having a lot of complexity, where the code is less complex, where the code is moderate complex. I want to look at in a graphical representation. A lot of static analysis tools can, you, can give you such reports. And the third benefit is you can detect defects prior to executing the software. It is static analysis. So you have not yet compiled the code. So even before compiling the code, even before making it executable, you are still able to find a lot of defects and anomalies. The fourth benefit is the static analyzers can provide early warning of suspicious code and designs. When you look at code, when you do a proper control for analysis, you will identify there are a lot of loops designed in such a way that they become infinite loops. Once you get into, into the loop, the program will not come out of that. Or sometimes people write dead code or unreachable code. People make a lot of mistakes with respect to how to use 
variables inside the programs. All these suspicious code, you can get an early warning if you use static analysis upfront. And the fifth benefit is you can identify defects that are not easily found by other testing, especially the maintainability issues, the style issues, the standards and uh, violations of standards. These kind of issues cannot be found by dynamic testing. They can be only found by static analysis by tools very efficiently. The sixth benefit is you can detect incorrect dependencies and inconsistencies across a large code. Let's say you are writing code and calling some subroutines, but those subroutines namings are wrong. So you are creating a incorrect dependency between what you are calling and what is the name that subroutine has. So those kind of things can be very quickly and easily found by your static analysis tools. And the seventh benefit is that you can improve maintainability of the code and design by enforcing coding standards. So these things can be done far more easily by static analysis tools than by people. Eighth benefit is that you can reduce complexity in design and as well as code because you get a very good graphical representation of the cyclomatic complex complexity across your control flow. Then you can easily understand where programmers are making it overly complex and you can revise and redo the designs and redo the coding. So that is a benefit. Then the ninth benefit is that you can prevent defects by highlighting causes of problems because this is happening early in the life cycle. And it not only finds defects, but it looks at the symptoms why those defects are occurring. So you can take a corrective action as well. So these are all the benefits of using static analyzers. So hope you have understood it. Before we conclude this lesson, let us check your understanding. So I have seven items there. So you have to tell which are the benefits of static analysis and which are not related to static analysis. So let us do the question. So what is the first point there? First one is provides early warning of suspicious code. Can static analyzers do that? Yes, they can do that. That is one very important benefit of using static analysis. Second one, evaluates real time performance. Can it be achieved by using static analyzers? No. If you have to evaluate real time performance, you have to execute the code. It is a dynamic testing activity. So it cannot be done. So it is not true. Third one is finds incorrect dependencies. Yes or no? Yes, you can find incorrect dependencies between various programs and subroutines. You can do that. Fourth point is verifies actual results from the use of software. Yes or no? Yes, you are right. It is no because you are not using the software. Still the software is in the source code form or a document form and you are analyzing and finding defects early. So that fourth item can only be done using dynamic testing. The fifth thing, is it a benefit or not, reveals hard to find defects. Yes, you are right, especially hard to find maintainability kind of defects can only be found by static analyzers. The sixth one is improves code maintainability. Yes or no? Is it a benefit or not? Yes, it is a benefit. The seventh point is it helps to prevent defects. Static analyzers can help to prevent defects. Yes, you are right. So these are all the benefits. Only evaluating real time performance and verifying actual results from use of software. They are not benefits of static analysis. Rest of the five are benefits of static analysis. Too. So now after having understood the benefits of static analysis tools, let us quickly review what type of defects can be found by static analysis tools. So first one is reference to variables with undefined values. So how variables are defined, used inside a programming program logic that comes under what we call data flow analysis, the study of 
variables inside a program is known as data flow analysis. So we'll talk about it, but these are the kind of defects that can be found very easily. Variables that are never used. Sometimes people define variables in a, and in the logic, they will never use it. Those kind of things can be found. Inconsistent interfaces between and among components. There'll be a lot of programs, they call other programs and they do a lot of mistakes in the naming or they will call some functions which are not even there or sometimes they call some functions with wrong kind of spelling mistakes, then those kind of things can be found very easily. And fourth type of defects that are found are unreachable or dead code. So a lot of times this relates to control flow issue of a program. So people write some strange code when some part of the code will never by design not get, will not get executed and that kind of code is called unreachable code. We'll talk about when we talk about control flow analysis. Programming standard violations. There are naming and style issues of programming. If they are not being maintained, it can easily find. Security vulnerabilities. There'll be a set of checklists using which the best practices you have to follow and code. If they are not followed, and they may cause what we call security vulnerabilities. So these automated static analysis tools can find them very easily. Seventh kind of defects they can find is syntax violations in code or design models. We have to follow some standards in syntax while making design models or code. If you are not following, these things can automatically find. So before we conclude, let us check our understanding with respect to the type of defects that can be found by static analysis. So identify which problem cannot be found with the static analysis tools to the right of the problem. So I have five problem types which cannot be found by static testing, check them. So first one is uninitialized variable, a variable that is not defined. It is not given any value. That is called uninitialized variable. Can it be found by Static testing, yes, it can be found by static testing. It is then dead code. These are the control flow related issues. They, can they be found by static testing? Yes, they can be found by static testing. Syntax violations, they can be found by static testing. Poor response times, can they be found by static testing? No, they cannot be found by static testing, you have to do dynamic performance testing. So that is not correct. Fifth item is security vulnerabilities. Can they be found by static analyzers? Yes, they can be found by static analysis tools. So hope you have understood the basics of what static analysis tools and what do they do, what kind of defects they find and what are the benefits of static analysis tools. Learn and have fun.